Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. So I'm standing here in the dark because uh, I need to swap out the light switch here for my home office and exchange it with a dimmer switch. But uh, I, I can't really do this alone since I've never done it myself. I'm not really into uh, playing with this kind of electricity without working with someone who's at least done it before. Don't know well, uh, I guess, how well he's done it before, but Brandon is coming over to help, and I think uh, Jake will be in tow, and I, I guess we'll see how this goes. Hope it goes well. Probably won't kill you unless you hang on to it. I thought it was 110 volts. It depends. Yeah. 110, 120, at whatever my, it takes. At my house, it tested at 104. Weird. Yeah. So you got some signal degradation at your house? Yeah. It's, it's better if it's 120 instead of 110, because then everything runs at a lower amperage, and you're less likely to cook yourself. Why didn't we turn off the breaker before you started messing around with this? Because uh, I'm insane, um, and I thought that it would be nice to have light, because given the choice between the possibility of electrocuting myself and working in the dark, I chose the... You, not to, not you know, they do make like, flashlights, you know? Not to mention there's like 5,000 things that you probably have to shut down in this room so you could turn, turn off, off the power. <laughs> that, that's the one that usually gets me. I've only had that bite me in the ass, like, once. <laughs> well, I'm recording the video anyway, in case you, like, nice electrocute corner. yourself. It's a nice and... sharp corner on the hall, so that when you get thrown back, <laughs> you'll hit your head and bleed. Well, so, it's it's when you're on 240 that you get thrown back, and 240 is a little safer to work with, because it will kick you. <laughs> oh, wait. No, I've seen, I've seen somebody get thrown on. Oh, so you just turned the lights on, by the way. Oh, yeah, so the switch is still attached. Because I'm like damaging myself. Yeah. So. Don't reach out for me if you start to get electrocuted. No, no, no <laughs> I won't do that. I'll throw water on him if he gets electrocuted. <laughs> as, as long as you don't touch anything except the rubber of the tools that you're working with, you're generally pretty safe. Do you have a second set of needles in those pliers? Yes, I do. Yeah, I'll need those. On the, on the YouTube channel is what not to do. Do not, do not follow Brandon's. Is this a how to or how not to? This is jackass. <laughs> this is electrical jackass. <laughs> I'm laughing because it's you, by the way. Yeah. It didn't pull out the way I wanted it to. That's what she said. <laughs> You've been reading YouTube comments way too frequently, <laughs> Jake. <laughs> So how many wires we got? Three. And they matter because? Uh, well, that's a ground, and then the other are just the pass-through of... How do you know it's a ground? Because uh, it doesn't have any shielding on it. So grounds typically don't have shielding? Yeah. They're unshielded, or sometimes they're the green wire. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm guessing that we didn't want that to happen. So That did... was the whole, I was trying to strip the wire without turning the power off and it doesn't work. Okay. It was fun, wasn't it? <laughs> That's the hot side. <laughs> Let's try not to set my house on fire. That would be fun. Think of the views you would get on YouTube. Chris Perot's house burns down. <laughs> this isn't funny. All right, so I'm going to go hit the breaker, correct? Yes. Uh, yeah, that'd probably be good. So now we're going to uh, flip the breaker that was tripped earlier. <laughs> of course, I opted to do it manually for Brandon, but he didn't want to listen. Uh, here we go. Bedroom. Should be good. More than touching 120. Yeah, I've been zapped by an electric yeah, fence before. This doesn't feel so good. I think I touched it on purpose because I didn't believe it. So we're going to have an extra wire because of the way this one's set up. Sometimes you go red to black, and sometimes you just go red to red. 
And since both of ours are the same. And since I am not on a single post, then you wouldn't use that one. There's a there's a little note on there. Yeah. That says That's if like you're. It's a three way, isn't it? It's a three way, it's, but if you're using a single can post. It's used as a three way. Yeah, if you're using a single post, post, that's what the third one's there. Yeah. And this is a specific one for, uh, let's LEDs. see here. Yeah, LEDs, CFLs, dimmer. Yeah, because otherwise there's not enough load, and so the rheostat doesn't do anything. Because your LED will run on like three watts. Uh, and so when you run the, the dimmer all the way down. It'll just ignore it. And yeah, you're just like, oh, I got three watts of power, I'm happy. What you talking about? So we're not going to get shocked again now because we no, don't have power? No, because I popped the, well, because I popped the breaker. <laughs> and you're standing over yeah. there, so you're I'm, not going to get I'm shocked. I'm at a safe distance now here. <laughs> Thank God for Zoom. Yeah, even when I have the power off, I don't reach out and touch the, the bare metal. But you're doing it now. No, no, I'm touching the wire. Oh, okay. I'm not touching the bare metal. Some people would lick their fingers and then twist the two wires together. Why would they do that? Because uh, if things are off, then that's the way to do it. And if you're going to get zapped, you might as well have good conductivity. It's amperage that kills you, so or burns you. So if your fingers aren't wet, then you know you get more of a burn than if they are. You're just loading this video full of tips. Anything, <laughs> anything else to say about how not to change a light switch? I can't believe it didn't package it with some electrical tape. Usually I'd put some tape on the wire nuts. Do you need tape? No. I, I, it's only a big deal if you're going to actually reach in there and jiggle things around on a regular basis. If you have rats. Do you have rats? No, just dogs that look like rats. So when you uh, popped it there a few minutes ago, what was it that uh, you did? Uh, I was stripping the wire, and because the wire basically became its own little circuit, I mean, there was an open and a closed part of the wire. Hang on just a second. Hey, Wicket, you may not want to stand there. <laughs> so, I'm going to send you notes here. It's no big deal. So then, can oh, we? I did that wrong. Is that a that's, that's the black one, not the green one. Yeah, yeah let's not do anything uh, wrong. So, so could I set my house on fire? Or I'm sorry, could you set my house on fire? <laughs> uh, doing this wrong? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, if it's reasonably unlikely, it's reasonably unlikely. But if you like, if you stripped the wires and nicked two spots, you could have it so that when you put it back into the wall, that they'd arc between themselves. But only on like humid days, which Seattle has a lot of. There's a lot of electrical fires that only happen when it rains. And that's because you know you've got wiring that is perfectly happy to use the air. So how do you know you didn't do any of that? Because uh, I d only trimmed the end. You sure about that? Yeah, Mr. <laughs> The problem with putting this video on YouTube is that it could void your home, uh, your home insurance coverage. <laughs> How many times have you done this before? Lots. See. <laughs> is it gonna fit? It's gonna be close. That that old one was really thin, and this one is pretty freaking fat. Yeah, that was quite quite kind of. Well, and there's extra wire. I probably should have shortened, but I didn't want to, to trim any more than we had to. Just use a sledgehammer on the wall. It'll be fine. I had the same issue with the thermostat. Too much, uh, there was too much bulk, I couldn't get it back in. Well, I'm not sure your holes are going to match. Oh, okay. oh, I see. Okay, so the holes will match and it'll all work out. Did it work? Oh, wait, the breaker's still off. The breaker's still off. Oh, it's one of those that's all on and then it's got the little slider on the side. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to turn the breaker back on and make sure that it works before you screw it all in? No. Okay. And there's a face plate for the, the top part, too, when we've got it on. Oh, okay. That makes more sense. Yeah, so it's cleaner. Right now, it looks a little... I was like, this is a really ugly cover. No. And why did they make this special for CFL and LEDs? I didn't realize there would be a difference. We, uh, we had that conversation briefly of a regular rheostat 
only is going to go down to like four watts of reduction because I mean at some point a regular bulb wouldn't light up and this takes it down to like a half a watt because a four watt a half a what half a watt a four watt bulb running at four watts is going to be full on so a normal rheostat's not going to give you enough dynamic range to actually dim the lights. So does this like, have like a transistor or something in it that... It has a detector in there to tell you how much... To, well, it doesn't tell you, but it detects how much load there is. I told you that'd be pretty cool. So how do I know this, this isn't going to catch fire in another week? You don't. Great. <laughs> have I burned any of your other stuff down? Yeah, but you haven't messed with any other electricity, and the only time you did it went... <laughs> It, it only goes on one way, I guess. So just make sure it goes, yeah. There you go. It's all installed. Okay. sits ugly on the wall, though. Like, it's not so bad. Do you want me to tighten it down further? No, it's, it's, it's the nature of the design. It's like, it like sticks up a little bit on the side. I could tighten it down a little. No, yeah, it probably wouldn't help much. You can't because of the way it's set um, up. Maybe we can, like, shim it. Eh, it's fine. You'll only see it if it's you're... It's imperceivable. You'll only see it if you're, like, standing with your eye right there. No, no you'll only see it every time you walk up the stairs, you'll see that shadow. Jake, you'll see it. I, <laughs> let me put it this way. I don't see it on the thermostat over here, because there's another gap oh, here yeah. on the other side, because I couldn't get it tightened all the way down because of the wires. Ta-da! The dimmer switch is now installed. The only problem that uh, we have is that even when the uh, dimmer is dim... The lights really don't dim all that much. <clears throat> but it does work, theoretically. And we've also uh, optimized the lights uh, for perfect recording from either the uh, live video feed or uh, the way I'm recording videos now or specifically with the camera I have on the uh, corner of my desk. We'll uh, continue to do some tweaking, including... Uh, adding another a light source behind uh, that particular bookshelf there to the uh, left of the printer in this video shot. This is not a full home office tour. You can watch that elsewhere on YouTube. And if you're looking for a full home tour, I'm probably never going to upload it to YouTube. Actually, I've, I've considered doing it, but like charging people a buck for me to give them a, a home tour. Would you pay a buck to uh, watch a full home video tour of my house? Because I'll do it. I really will. <laughs> I just think it'd be interesting to see if I could charge people a buck to watch a home video of uh, my home. Either way, um, there you go. That is how to not really install a light switch. Hopefully Brandon's given you a few tips and tricks along the way. And if nothing else, you get to see what uh, my life is like beyond this desk. So... Uh, until next time, uh, you know where to find me, my blog, chris.perillo.com. You could email me, chris at perillo.com. In fact, if you didn't know it already, Brandon, Jake, and myself offer SEO and SEM consulting services uh, for businesses. So FYI, just drop us a line if you're serious about it because we've helped a lot of companies. Uh, and then, of course, you can you know stop by the chat room which is a part of a live video feed, even though that shot wasn't completely steady because I was partially talking to the mirror, partially talking to the uh, camera. The live video feed is connected to this camera, which is streaming out over the web 24 hours a day, seven days a week, at live.perillo.com. We'll see you later.